the new Negro. In the last decade, something beyond the watch and guard of statistics has happened in the life of the American Negro. And the three norms who have traditionally presided over the Negro problem have a changeling in their laps. The sociologists, the philanthropists, the race leader are not unaware of the new Negro, but they are at a loss to account for him. He simply cannot be swathed in their formulae. For the younger generation is vibrant with a new psychology. The new spirit is awake in the masses and under the very eyes of the professional observers is transforming what has been a perennial problem into the progressive phases of contemporary Negro life. Could such a metamorphosis have taken place as suddenly as it has appeared to? The answer is no. Not because the new Negro is not here, but because the old Negro had long become more of a myth than a man. The old Negro, we must remember, was a creature of moral debate and historical controversy. His has been a stock figure perpetuated as historical fiction, partly in innocent sentimentalism, partly in deliberate reactionism. So for generations in the mind of America, the Negro has been more of a formula than a human being. A something to be argued about, condemned or defended, to be kept down or in his place or helped up, to be worried with or worried over, harassed or patronized, a social boogie or a social burden. His shadow, so to speak, has been more real to him than his personality. Through having had to appeal from the unjust stereotypes of his oppressors and traducers to those of his liberators, friends, and benefactors, he has had to subscribe to the traditional positions from which his case has been viewed. Little true social or self-understanding has or could come from such a situation.